from Cooking with Plants and today I'm making a no knead pizza dough. Let's get started. For the dough I'm using two cups of wholemeal flour and one cup of all-purpose flour or if you've got baking flour you can also use that. I'm just shaking this so it's level with the cup. There's no precise measuring needed here. So we've got those two different types of flour but if you only have one or the other just use whatever you like. Now I'm also going to add one teaspoon of instant dried yeast. Again I'm just roughly measuring this. It's a very forgiving dough. And one teaspoon of Celtic sea salt. just adding a dash of white pepper as well just for a little bit of extra flavor in that base you can add whatever herbs spices and seasonings that you like or you can just leave it plain I'm also adding in just a little bit of marjoram as well okay so that's our dry ingredients done I'll just give those a quick mix through and now I'm going to add two cups of water this is just room temperature water that I'm adding in. And to mix this through, I'm just going to use the back of this spoon, the handle of this spoon. Just making sure all that flour is incorporated. Okay, that's all mixed together and you'll see it's starting to pull away from the edge a little bit. So that is just ready to let sit for about an hour or so. I'll just take that off. And I'm going to cover this with a shower cap. This is just my cooking shower cap, I haven't actually used it. Or if you prefer you could just use some plastic film or a tea towel and just put that into a warm draft free spot for about an hour or two until you start to see it rising. So after about an hour or an hour and a half when you're ready to use your pizza dough, preheat your oven to 200 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so now that the dough has doubled in size, um, mine took about an hour and a half, it's ready for the next stage. So this will make two bases. I'm just going to release this from the edge. And you'll be able to smell the yeast that it's active and doing its thing. So this will be really yummy. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just dip this spatula into a little bit of water just so the dough doesn't stick to it. I've also got two pizza trays lined with some parchment paper. And I'm going to halve this dough and just pour half of this dough onto the first pizza tray. Okay. And do the same with the other one. So I've just got a container of water here, I'm just going to wet my hands a little bit and flatten out this dough into a nice round pizza shape. Now that this is all spread out, I'm going to put it in the oven for about 7 minutes, then I'll flip it over and it'll be ready to top. If you prefer a thicker crust, just let the pizza dough sit for about half an hour after this stage before you put it in the oven. Okay, my seven, seven minutes is up and this is what the base looks like. I'm going to turn it over. With these pizza bases, you actually have two options. You can 
Now that this is half cooked, just leave this. You could put it in the fridge into a, a bag or um, into the freezer and use it at a later stage and finish the cooking process with the toppings and maybe cook it for another maybe seven to ten minutes um, and then that pizza would be done or you could use it without partially cooking the dough top this with all your toppings and then cook it for about 15 to 20 minutes in your oven from scratch so either way if you prefer to have one base on hand for a later date then go for this option if you want to cook it straight away go for this option Okay, so I'm just going to put some quick toppings onto these two pizza styles just so you can see the difference in the baking process. And I'll just start with a quick tomato base. Oops, make a big mess. <laughs> Next, I'm adding some hummus. You can also do dollops of hummus if you prefer to have it a little bit separate. I like to mix it through. Just a sprinkling of green onions. Just some herbs of your choice. I'm putting on some basil. Some sliced up mushrooms. Just spread them pretty evenly. Now I quite often have my pizza just plain like that without any vegan cheese. But today I do have some on hand and I'm making this for my son. So I'll just grate a little bit of this over the top as well. So this is the first pizza done and I'm putting it back in for 10 minutes. Okay, so this is the pizza where the dough hasn't been cooked. And I'm just adding on the toppings. done and I'm going to put this other one in for 20 minutes okay so our 20 minutes is up for this pizza and it has cooked beautifully yum ready to serve so this is the difference in the two pizzas I actually like the way the um, pizza cooks when it's cooked longer in one go but you do have the option if you want to cook it later on or have a base ready for the following day to make it easy then this is a great option as well and I just noticed with this pan I use today normally I use a non-stick pan but it has stuck a tiny bit so maybe when you're turning it over put it onto another piece of parchment paper or onto a non-stick tray just to make it easier to lift later on when you're serving and I'm going to give one of these a taste test. Okay, so I've already tested some of my son's pizza, but I better leave the rest for him. <laughs> it's really yummy. I'll get this piece here. This one. Give it a try. Well, I know the base is good because I've already had the other one. <laughs> I'll have a second piece just, you know, because I have to. Mmm, hot and delicious. Mmm, yum. Mmm, oh, hot. So easy to make. This is fantastic if you have kids in the house. Just get them to make this dough. It's so much fun, and they don't have to worry about actually rolling out dough and getting it the right consistency. Very forgiving, quick and easy. Hope you try this recipe and give it a thumbs up if you like it. And I'd love to hear your feedback. Let me know what other recipes you'd like me to make. And I'll see you for the next recipe. Bye.